So I'm back with another material in Blender 2.8 EV. Once again, it's been a while since we've done another material. Uh, another one for the series. I think, what is this, uh, 10, I think, me? I don't know. I don't remember what number it is. Um, but we have another one. It looks, I, I love doing these materials because they just look so cool. I have another sci-fi type one here. Um, all right, so we have uh, a color ramp node, which is a shift A search just color ramp right there just grab that and I have this color right here set to white and then this one set to this nice bluish color uh, something like that and what we get with that is a uh, is a really nice soft blue kind of thing going on and uh, I'm using a I'm using a circle which is why it has these little pole lines um, and then uh, I have a displacement modifier on here which is just modifier displace and then uh, I have a texture that texture is of course a clouds texture and then also I have a subdivision surface, which is three and three for the render and viewpoint uh, viewport. All right, there we go. So with all that out the way, we can go ahead and take a look at uh, the principled BSDF shader here, which I have no metallic, 100% specular, uh, a little bit of roughness, uh, some clear coat, some clear coat roughness, and uh, some sheen tint, but we don't need that because I don't have sheen on. So. That looks pretty good, um, and then after that I have this this dude right here, the fribbity fribbity fresnel, uh, into the factor of the uh, mix shader right there, and uh, that is just being plugged into, if I'm not mistaken, this guy right here, yeah, into this mix shader down here. So, after I did that, I mixed it with this green kind of electricity color that we have here, um, and I have a, a second one of this, so I'm gonna do, I'm gonna I'm gonna unhook some of these really quickly now. Um, because it's going to be quite a lot to take in at the same time. So I'm just going to go ahead and grab this guy uh, and plug this in. So now what we'll have is we'll have just that blue that we had, the, the light the light blue, with the first green that I have right here. So all of this is the first little bit of setup that I want to go through real quick. I'm gonna, I kind of just duplicated this uh, twice more. So what we have here is kind of like the base for the green here a little bit I guess you could say so I have a noise texture right in this noise texture if that would come back <laughs> the noise texture is kind of breaking up the Voronoi texture that I have here which is why the color and the fact they're plugged into the vector and the scale of the Voronoi and I'll get back to that in a second so if I go ahead and um, if I go ahead and hit uh, shift a and by the way the, the this guy up here uh, sh uh, shift a search R F E. You get that. You get that boy right there. All right, there we go. I just wanted to say that just in case. Uh, all right. So with the noise texture and the Voronoi texture, uh, the noise is as you can see affecting the scale because I have that. Well, I have the color into the vector, but it still looks like it's affecting the scale because it's affecting the scale of the noise. Um, and then I plugged both of these into a Voronoi. All right, there we go. So this is what it looks like without the noise texture, and this looks pretty sweet. This looks pretty swanky. So uh, we have that set to crackle because crackle is a cool feature. If I'm not mistaken, we did not have this before. I don't recall that being there. But we have a clo the closest is the uh, is the default. Closest is the default, and it doesn't appear the same. It doesn't come off the same way. It really the crackle really does look like cracks. And you can see here, this is pretty cool right here. But it's not really what I'm going for. So if I ch if I change this back to crackle, you see it just looks so much better. That's awesome. So I, I go ahead and plug the color into the vector and the factor into the scale, and now we have something that looks like this. So after that, I have the Verona uh, plugged into a fact into I'm sorry into the color ramp, uh, the color into the factor is what I'm trying to say, and that's of course just a Shift A search color ramp of course again, and I have three colors in here if you look really close, and I have this on B spline because that is that's helping us out. If I have this on E's, it's something like that. We need it on B spline so it has a little fady tapery things because if we don't, then it's pretty much just the lines, which is pretty sweet. But I do like it better when it has a little bit of the bleed that's in there. I think it looks pretty cool. So, I have a really solid green color right here, then right up next to it, I have a black color. And then I have another black color right here to kind of push that backwards like that. So that looks pretty cool. Um, and then after that, I have the color of the color ramp hooked up into the color of an emission, which is of course just shift A, then emission. Um, and then that, that is on actually 100, instead of 1, which is the default, it's on 100. Get a nice little uh, glow in there. All right, so then I have that hooked up into a mix shader, which is Shift A, search, mix, of course. And then that is hooked up into a multiply. Um, and this multiply for the noise texture, you can see, uh, well, you're not going to really be able to see uh, much of what it's doing right now. You can see in the background back there, uh, if I change it around, you can't really tell too much with the noise because the noise is very subtle. Well, if I go to, if I go back here, you'll be able to see it. There we go. So you can see the noise back there, just for a little bit of depth and a little bit of texture on the actual base of the uh, the base of the ball here. And then the I have a little bit of Veronoi 
uh, on the back just for um, just for uh, uh, some little dots and some places and stuff like that to, to, to break up some of the, the bluish gray. And of course, both of those are mixed together. That's a noise and a magic. So search uh, magic and then of course search noise and also search um, not multiply. You have to search math for this and then you grab that and then change this from add to multiply. There we go. You can't search multiply for that. And then we hook both of those into the bottom uh, input of the mix shader. And then we mix that with the stuff that we had up here. So now both of these are now combined. So that's what we're looking at now. All right. So this is where we are in our time at the moment. So mix both of those together. We're here. We're looking good. Now I can go ahead and add back in uh, this guy right here. So if I, if I hook that up and then I plug this back into there. So what I've done is after we've mixed these two together, oh, I'm hitting B to box select, by the way, after we mix these two together, so both of these are out of the way now, we, I'm going to go ahead and mix both of these together with a mix shader into this mix shader uh, for this stuff down here. And this stuff down here is kind of the secondary green lines that I have around here in a second. I'll show you. There we go. All right, so this is kind of the, the big chunks uh, and the big glowy pieces right here. I thought this was a really cool uh, little effect here because it has this really like it, it's like it's shining through the core and it's really pretty cool. So uh, what we have is of course a noise texture once again, um, and that's set to 2.5 and 16 for the detail. Not too huge, not too small, I guess. And the details all the way up because we need some of that grit and that texture because this is supposed to be a more sci-fi realistic kind of thing going on here. So I have that both plugged into the Veronoi just the same way we had up top there, and I have the color of the Veronoi hooked up into the color ramp which is of course a shift a search color ramp again um, and then we have a black color mixed with that um, with the green color and that gives us that really really vibrant bright bright greenish yellow color which is really cool and that is set to ease this time hey the position is 0.555 that's my favorite number uh, sweet so then I have all of that once again hooked up into a an emission shader and then it's plugged straight into that mix shader that I just mixed everything else with so what we've done is we've taken these three up here mixed them with all of this stuff down here right to get the initial green then we took all of that and then mixed it with this so now that's where we are now so we have this last little bit right here and this bit is responsible for the last green line so if I plug this into there back into there and then plug it in you can see that now we've mixed all of that together so now we have all three of these mixed together now and let me really quickly go through this which is pretty much the same exact thing that was up there um, but it has a principal shader with it, and I'll, I'll tell you why in a second here, because I didn't want it to really emit anything. Um, so, once again, another noise texture, and Varroa and I hooked up together, and then the scale for the noise is 10, and the detail is 16. Um, this is set to Manhattan and Crackle. What was the other one set to? Uh, this was set to Distance and Second Closest. Yeah, that's right. So, Intensity, uh, this one, the first one was Intensity, Distance, Crackle, right? for the Veronoi, and then the second one is Intensity dis Distance Second Closest, and the third one is Intensity Manhattan Crackle. So there we go. I don't think I said that. Alright, there we go. Now we plug the color of the Veronoi into the co into the factor of the, the color ramp, and then of course we have another one on ease here with a black color over here, and then a lighter green uh, right here. We just see those little places in the background. It's very, very subtle, but you can see it, especially when it shines. That's what it's for. It's just like little shine pieces, you know, on, that's on there. When I, when I rotate, you see they're a little bit more visible. When I uh, go away from it, you can see these completely disappear. Now when they're not in the light. I thought that was really cool. Just like little tiny wet looking spots, I guess, maybe. Um, and then that is uh, plugged into a principled BSDF, which, with a, which of course has specular and a little bit of roughness, which is why it shines and the light hits it a little bit. But yeah, so I plugged all of that into the mix shader to mix it with all of the stuff that we've done before. So we have a Musgrave texture, which is this guy. So all that weird looking stuff. Uh, we have that guy on 10 for the scale, 16 for the detail, and then 0, 1, 0, 1 for all the other settings here. I have this on multi-fractal, which I think is the default, if I'm not mistaken. Then I have the Musgrave texture, which is, of course, Shift A, Search, Musgrave. Um, the color plugged into the detail of the noise. Um, and then we have uh, both of these, the color and the factor of the noise plugged into the Verona once again, just the same way we had before. And that is set to intensity, distance, and crackle. And then the, the color of the Verona goes into a bump, which is a shift A search bump node right there and grab that boy and plug it right in but uh but yeah that is it for today's breakdown tutorial i hope you guys and girls enjoyed it i'll see you in the next one but until then bye bye